I'm Tom Cady, and I'm an attorney at Fargo Patton in Business Law. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how attorneys get paid. Attorneys are paid in a variety of ways. There's a list of pros and cons you can create for each of these different methods. I want to briefly go over a few of the different methods attorneys get paid and some of the good and some of the bad consequences of these different methods. So very broadly speaking, I like to, like to look at attorney billing methods in three distinct categories. There's flat rate, hourly, and contingency billing. Over the years, I've used all three types. I've used combinations of the three and even other variations. So probably the most common billing method for attorneys is hourly. How this works is pretty simple. For each hour your attorney works, you will build an hourly rate. Hourly rates vary tremendously across areas of practice and geographic regions. I've seen rates as low as $100 per hour. I've seen them as high as $1,200 per hour for very specialty trades such as merger and acquisition attorneys in New York. You might wonder, why would I pay an attorney more per hour if I could get one for $100? Well, the reality is you often get what you pay for. Some attorneys are much faster in terms of work completion and just know the subject matter that much better. If I was to hire someone to build a house, I probably wouldn't necessarily hire the person who charges the lease per hour. I would hire the builder who best fits my vision. One of the major cons to an hourly payment method is the fact there's a conflict of interest between the fact that the more work there is, the more the attorney can build. The attorney is incentivized to be really thorough and find more work. By no means am I saying attorneys go out of their way to try and make situations more complicated merely to bill more, rather I am saying there's this built-in incentive. The second billing method is contingency. Contingency billing is essentially such that if a client wins a case, the attorney gets to receive part of the winnings. For example, let's say you are in a car accident, you're injured in a car accident, and you retain an attorney on a contingency basis. After fighting for you, your attorney ultimately helps obtain $100,000 from the defendant. If your contingency fee was, say, 33%, the attorney would receive $33,000 and you would receive $67,000. Contingency rates can vary anywhere from 20% to 33%. This billing method does align the interest of the clients and the interest of the attorney in terms of reducing the time spent on a case, but it does create an incentive for your attorney to pursue the case in such a way that doesn't pursue non-cash solutions or factor in your mental well-being. Again, I'm not saying attorneys aren't generally helpful, rather there's just this default conflict of interest. The third method of billing is flat rate. Flat rate billing is when an attorney provides a service at a set price regardless of the time spent or the success of the representation. An example of this could be an attorney agrees to write a contract for a client for, say, $500. Regardless of whether this work takes one hour or 10 hours, the price paid by the client is $500. In my opinion, this type of billing has the least level of conflict of interest. In many cases, this method of billing just simply isn't possible. In instances where the amount of time and effort needed to resolve a situation is unknown or speculative, it's very hard for parties to determine a flat rate. All of our attorneys at Fargo Patent and Business Law have experienced running businesses and understand business. This unique trait can help bridge that gap between the needs of business and the needs of the legal system. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, this is Tom Kading from Fargo Patent and Business Law.